In Gaza shows no signs of letting up. There are no new plans for a pause in fighting for another round of hostage releases. Trace? Dan Springer live for us in Seattle. Dan, thank you. Let's bring in former Army Reserve Captain and Intel Officer Abe Hamaday, along with the former White House Director of Global Engagement, Brett Bruin. Gentlemen, thank you both. We appreciate it very much. Brett, to you first. The Biden administration is now much more vocal in criticizing Israel. I'm going to play one more sound bite from the Vice President and get your response. Watch. As Israel defends itself, it matters how. The United States is unequivocal. International humanitarian law must be respected. Too many innocent Palestinians have been killed. All these caveats from the defense secretary to the, I mean, you name it, it goes all the way down the administration, Brett. This is really unfortunate, uh, namely because it is starting, as you say, Trey, to open up uh, some distance between the United States and Israel at a critical moment. I mean, uh, you started the show talking about some of the uh, atrocities that we've now well documented against Israeli civilians. And yes, of course, Israel, as well as the United States, uh, our allies need to follow international uh, human rights law. We need to ensure that we're minimizing civilian casualties. But that's yeah. stating the obvious. And I think Israel has gone to great lengths to do so. And having yeah. the vice president out there, along with Secretary Lloyd Austin, suggesting that somehow uh, they're coming up short of that it is really unfortunate and it's damaging to yep. our international efforts to resolve this situation. And, and some would say, Abe, that, you know, this administration might want to just kind of look in at its own strategy, uh, talking about the Houthis. Of course, they are backed by Iran. I want to play this soundbite, uh, uh, the constant barrage from the Houthis and other proxies. This is the former Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. I think, I think it's been a little bit too selective. I mean, we hit some ammo dumps, we hit some other targets. I want to go after those who are firing missiles at our troops and make sure they understand that when they fire a missile, they're going to die. Yeah, I mean, maybe a, a tougher response. Your thoughts on this, Abe? Yeah, there's been over 75 attacks on American forces since October 7th. So. You know, right now, a lot of the Middle East, they have no deterrence with the United States because there hasn't been serious consequences. And one of the things that I'm so confused about by the Biden administration is them still not redesignating the Houthi rebels as a foreign terrorist organization. I mean, this is when, when Biden took office in his first month, he decided to delist them as a terrorist organization when President Trump listed them as a terrorist organization. So yep. a lot of the foreign policy isn't making much sense, Trace. But, you know, I think right now, even to your previous clip, it seems like the Biden administration is playing politics at the risk of Israel's safety. Yeah, and I want to put this up. This is the New York Post. Uh, the headline reads, Joe Biden's fecklessness may bring defeat for Israel and Ukraine. Goes on to say, Team Biden's strategic decision to barely respond to attacks on U.S. forces across the Mideast now paying off for Iran and its axis of resistance. Your thoughts on that, Brett? Well, I think we do need to start uh, articulating a, a strategy, both on Ukraine, but also when it comes to Israel. You know, yesterday we heard, uh, in addition to Congresswoman Jayapal's mm -hmm. remarks, unfortunate remarks, uh, uh, regarding the rape of Israeli women, she also uh, very casually suggested that we simply need to put together a coalition of Arab states to uh, affect the creation of a two-state solution. You know, as someone who served a decade and a half in the U.S. Foreign Service, um, those are enormous yeah. challenges. And you can't simply, in a matter of days, weeks, months, or even years, uh, bring about something that for centuries has been very difficult to even fathom. Yeah, I mean, and final thoughts to you on this, Abe, because, the, you know, the Biden administration, many are saying, listen, you don't want to escalate this, but Iran is already escalating this. The attacks are going to get more brazen, Trace. And what I worry about the most is, you know, let this be a warning. It seems like every single terrorist group in the region is attacking the United States' interests. And what I worry about, too, is the Houthis have been known in the past to try uh, have attacked civilian targets like Saudi Aramco, which disrupted our oil market. So I'm very concerned that the Biden administration is not creating a deterrence and not actually responding with serious consequences to so many of these attacks. Yeah. Abe Hamaday, Brett Bruin, gentlemen, thank you.